good day everyone um while uh, i was trying to to review my my um youtube channel um i i decided to to you know give some summary of my videos now since i started posting um uh, educational video because my my youtube channel is actually all about my my personal uh, activities as as an IT instructor, as a father, and uh, as a pit lover. So that is why if you are going into my YouTube channel, uh, it is composed of three three you know three uh, playlists. Okay, one is for my uh, my family. The second one is intended for my pets and the third one is for um, educational videos okay. and for now I am trying to work out on posting videos about uh, C programming language because when I was in college and even on my uh, level right now um, I've been teaching for almost um, 24 years as, as an IT instructor and uh, the way I, I look at it um, the best language if somebody needs to learn programming language is to learn c programming language that, that's why i i, I started uh, uh, posting videos on c and i did it by my own right and hopefully when i'm done with the c programming language i can then post a video for um, java programming c sharp and uh, so on and so forth and uh, today i I decided to to make some some review of my of my videos since I first posted my uh, C programming language video and up to now, right? Um, today is uh, October twenty six, two thousand twenty. Okay, so for my my followers, uh. I'd love to have this kind of summary videos for you to be guided on the, the coverage that we have until until today, okay? Because when I when I reviewed my, my YouTube channel, um my first video was this one. If you can follow my, my mouse my, my mouse printer, C programming basics, okay? And uh it's in here one month ago. Now I can still remember that on that particular video. I was discussing about the basics in C, like for example, um, uh, C programming is actually an application, right? And it needs an operating system for that particular C programming language to be to for you to to, to make make use of that, right? And um, I was also discussing about the syntax, right? The formats or the language of C. Because as as a programmer, you have to have or, or you have to learn the language, the syntax of C. Because in the first place, um, all programming languages doesn't have a common sense, right? Uh, there are only up to the ups and downs of the programs, the zeros and ones, the binary systems of the programs, right? So. For you to have a common language with, with, with C programming language, for example, you have to learn the language of C, you have to learn the syntax, right? So, I can still remember one month ago, I was discussing about that. And uh, as of now, there are actually 869 views, viewers. Right? So, meaning there are people who tend to go back and back just to understand the basics in, in uh, C, right? So, um, I I did also discuss that uh, there are so many compilers available in the in the, the internet today. There are several online C compilers, now. especially today that we are in a new norm. That we are not allowed to have a face-to-face -face class, so you're up to using online compilers, right? S especially if you're using your mobile phone only, so you have to be uh, resourceful enough in looking for those uh, compilers right? 
So I was discussing about that in that particular in that particular um, video, and I did discuss also the the variables, right? The variables, uh, like for example, uh, when you are going to create programs, right? Uh, you're good as you're trying to create, you know, formulas out from the scratch. Okay? And those formulas will eventually create values. And that values should be stored to a particular variable or container. And in C programming language, um, I made mention that for now, we'll try to focus on three. Uh, character variable, integer variable, and uh, float variable. Okay? So I, I, I tried to... I tried to differentiate this uh, this um, three variables right? because when you are up to creating C programming language, you have to, to to declare variables right on the upper part of your program, and then because you're not allowed to create programs, you're not allowed to use any variables right that are not being declared on the declaration part of the program right, and I I even mentioned also that. Um, there are rules in creating variables. Number one, a variable must start with a character or a letter. And followed by any combinations, any combinations of letter, number, and underscore. Beyond that, you're not allowed to use. Like, for example, special symbols, percent sign, comma, vacant space. You're not allowed to do that in, in, in variables. It must start with a character followed by any combinations of character, let uh, underscore and numbers okay there's some rules and when you are up to declaring this particular vari variable as a character variable make it sure that when you are going to use that in your program it must also be dealing with character values or else type mismatch error will be displayed on the screen so those are actually uh, syntax or formats that we have to look into when we are going to learn any programming uh, languages that is why when i when i did some reviews today i decided to make a, a summary of a summary of all videos up to today right so that for my subscribers to have a glimpse of what's yesterday until today okay so that's it and uh, the second one which i think uh, because it's still in here one month ago i have 547 views c programming and art and science in, in on that particular video i was actually uh, defining i did define what is programming right programming is an art and at the same time it is a science what is then the difference between an art and a science i i did i did explain it well right Programming as a science means you have to follow rules, right? There are some formats that you have to follow. Like, for example, in every statement of C, you have to end up with a semicolon. That's part of the syntax. When you are going to, to, to make use of printf statement, for example, you have to end it up with a semicolon. And in close with double quote, if you want to display a particular message, right? So, those are science. Good as in math. Math is actually a science. Why? Because it has standards. What is then the standard of math? 1 plus 1 is always 2. It can never be 3. 1 times 2 is always 2. Those are standards in math. And that makes math a science. Right? So, same, in, same with programming. There are some rules that we need to follow. That if you are to declare a particular variable as an integer variable, make it sure that you'll be using that one as an integer container also. If not, then your program won't run. So there are so many rules that we have to look into. And that makes programming a science. You have to memorize. You have to understand. You have to, you have to go deep and look into the attitude and behaviors of all the statements in, in, in C programming uh, language, okay? And um, how about programming as an art? An art because in programming, 
there's no such thing as a standard in terms of solutions. Because a lot of times, when you are to create programs, you're good as you're creating formulas out from the scratch. For as long as your formula is actually correct and caters and targets the solution of the problem, then your program is correct. Like, for example, when you are into, for example, if you want to go to Cebu City or, or anywhere, there's so many ways. You can either go there and walk, right? By way of walking. Or you can either go to Cebu City by way of cycling, bicycle. You can do that. You can go to Cebu City by way of motorcycle. If you know how to ride, right? You can go there by way of your private car. That's good. The good thing is, definitely you, you will go to Cebu City. Or you can go there by way of riding public transportations. There are so many ways. In programming also, if for example, the program demands you to, to have two values and then compute for the sum, then you can create programs as long as you want or as short as you want. That's good for as long as at the end of the day, your program will compute for the sum. That's a science. Okay? So, um, it, on my end as, as um, an IT instructor, I, I find programming is, you know, more on an art. I enjoyed a lot of things when I do programming because most of the times my program is totally different to the other's program. But both ended up the same direction. That makes programming science. No, on my third video, still one month ago, see programming hands-on. I was discussing about, I, 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 I did introduce online compilers at that time. I, 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 I was discussing about uh, how to use um, these particular online compilers, online GDB, and how to run. If there's an error, what, what's next, right? How to debug and so on. And, and so I, 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 I try to explain the technicalities of uh, the importance of having an online compiler because I, 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 I on my mind, uh, I, I believe that a uh, lot of uh, C learners are only having cell phone or, or mobile units. They don't have laptops or what, right? So the only way to execute, to run your C program is to have an online compiler. So I was discussing this, I'm sorry, this video, yes, uh, uh, and it uh, it has a 650 views. <laughs> That's it. The next one is actually my my. It's all about my my personal activities, my pets, and I, I love dogs. By the way, right? I love koi. I do have I do have pan in there, right? I do have a sola and so on and so forth, right? Now my next video for um, C programming language is this one. C programming taking value from the user. Then uh, in this particular video. I, I started introducing um, uh, statements in C programming, right? Yeah, I started uh, uh, discussing here. If you want, if your program w wanted to ask value from the keyboard, what particular statement that you are going to use? And if this particular statement is the ideal one that you have to use, then what is then the, the attitude of this one? What is the syntax? What is the requirements? What is the formats? I was discussing that bit. And I can, I can still remember that I did discuss scanf. Right? Scanf statement. And uh, scanf statement actually, um, there are there are actually three three input statements and output statements in C programming language. So I'm going to, I have, a, I, I have a separate video on that. But in this particular video, I was only discussing about the, the scanf, right? And uh, scanf, then close, and open parenthesis, then followed by double quote, percent D, the data placeholder, comma, then ampersand, followed by a variable. You're all familiar with that, right? Ampersand enables your variable to take value from the keyboard. That's the main function of um, scanf. And of course, with semicolon at the end of the line. Right. Because semicolon, semicolon is actually uh, 
the demarcation line between between statements in, in C programming, right? And then um, I I I did have uh, sideline videos on my oh yeah my grandson, right? And so I have Bikoy, I have this dog, right? So the next programming video that I have is this one, programming flexibility, right? Programming flexibility. Um, in this particular uh, video, actually, I, I was introducing um, several statements that have almost the same functions, right? For example, uh, when you are going to use scanf, right, to ask for a value from the keyboard, is th do we have another statement similar to scanf that we can still use that's programming flexibility you have you have options knowing that programming is an art right like for example in my case when i am going to create programs and if the program demands for loop statements i am so much inclined using for loop and take note there are four types of loop statements in say programming right in my other videos i'm going to discuss later okay so that's programming flexibility in programming um it is ideal for somebody for you to become a good programmer to be flexible enough in using um c programming statements okay so you have to learn a lot of um, statements right because here on my next video c programming inputs and outputs right this is actually a continuation of this programming flexibility. On this inputs and outputs um, video, I was discussing about the three types of input statements and output statements in C. They're actually the same. They have the same function technically. But then, depends upon the programmer. Right? For example, the first type of inputs and output statements, which is their, their actual partner, Printf and scanf. Printf is an output statement. Scanf is an input statement. That's the first one. The second one, the second partner is gets and puts. Right? Gets is an input statement. Puts is an output statement. Okay? Anything that you're getting out from this get statement, you can display it by using puts. And the third one is uh, get car and put car. Okay? Anything that you're getting a character from this get car, you can display it by, us by using put car. Okay, so there are three inputs and output statements in C program. From that alone, it makes you flexible. That's programming flexibility. And you have to learn. You have to learn what is the difference between scanf, uh, gets, and get car. Like for example, scanf. Scanf is limited only to asking for an integer value. Scanf is limited only for asking for a character value. It can still accept string. It depends upon your, your, your variable, right? And then whatever things, whatever values that you're getting out from Scanf, you can display it back on the screen by using printf. Okay? Now, how about gets and puts? Gets is capable of asking string values. Like, for example, a particular sentence, lines of instructions, you can do that. But you must declare your variable as an array variable, character array variable. Then you can use gets. And you can, play, you can display the string values from your gets by way, of using, by, by way of using pots. Because pots is capable of displaying string values. Something like that. Git card. Git car is designed to get a character similar to scanf, and put car is capable of displaying any character out from that get car. So that's inputs and outputs. Again and again, that boils down to programming flexibility um, thing. Okay, so uh, that's it. I I I I I, I, I did discuss that, and uh, on my next video, right? On my next video here, uh, since this this is this is the summary of all my, my of all my videos, um, I did post um, C programming 
then if conditions here uh, when you are to create large programs it is quite impossible for you not dealing conditions right for example design a program to ask for an age and then eventually your program will evaluate and display whether that particular age is capable of voting or not that's it and you'll be dealing with conditions okay on that particular video i was discussing about the syntax of if conditions the technicalities the behavior of if because under that if uh, the, the behavior is this if condition is true perform this statement if false do not perform that's that's the behavior that's the attitude of if statement and uh, if you are somewhat familiar with if you'll enjoy it. but then if you have limited understanding on the behavior of if statement then you cannot you know come up with an accurate program dealing with conditions right so um my next video was this one because the rest of my videos are actually for my for my hobbies for some lives I, I i did have you know mushroom farm right and my my hong kong memories right so i was you know riding a roller coaster in this at the uh, ocean park oh, it was so scary at that and here um i i have this title c programming in-depth discussion on if statement um i can still remember that i gave several examples using if statement right like for example if you are to to create a program that will ask for values from 1 to 12 right and then your program will evaluate whether that value uh, represents january february march april may and if the value goes beyond 1 to 12, display invalid. I was discussing about that, right? When I say in-depth discussion, uh, I didn't give examples. And then out from that examples, I tried to I tried to um, discuss it line by line. And in that way, I was able to, you know, share the technicalities of, of um, if uh, <coughs> statement. <laughs> so... Um, that's it. That, that's that's the summary of, of my my videos. And then the next video is this: C programming, nested if and ladderize, right? Because you know, in in in, in C programming language, a language, there are actually four types of if statement or conditional statements. Technically, they are the same. Their behavior, their attitude is actually similar. If the condition is true, perform this one. If the condition is false, do not perform and proceed to the next. That's uh, C conditions, right? There are actually four. The first one is the simple if statement. The one that I did discuss a while ago. The next one is ladderize. The next one is the, 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 the nested if statement. And then the next one is switch statement. There are four. Those are actually conditions, uh, conditional statements in, in C. And uh, what I was discussing on this video is actually I tend to differentiate nested if and ladderize. By the way, nested if statement is actually a simple if statement. But then in between there's this another if statement. It is actually an if statement within another if statement. That's nested if. But then behavior-wise, attitude-wise, syntax-wise, they're actually the same. Okay? And uh, you know you can use nested if statement if the problem is, uh, you know, takes a long lines of conditions. And to make it shorter, you'll be using elimination way of programming and nested if will apply. I, I did discuss that. I, I, I made, I gave some examples on that. Right, yeah. Ladderize is actually uh, if there's this problem, wherein uh, there is this uh, uh, what they call this repetition of conditions, but then the the variation lies on the value. For example, I I, I made mention on this. When you are to ask for a certain value, and your your program will will, will evaluate whether 
that value represents January, February, March, then Ladi Rice will, will do. Ladi Rice will do. Ladi Rice if statement is actually several if statements. It is actually several. There's a lot of if statements doing the same thing. The only difference is on the conditions. Right. So if your program takes a lot of if statement, I would like to suggest you go for ladder nice. You go for ladder nice. Okay. So <laughs> that's it. Uh, the next video is a C programming switch statement. Um, this is actually the fourth type of conditional statements in C switch statement. Honestly and uh, technically, switch statement is similar to ladder nice. Switch statement is, uh, it can only handle integer value, right? So, for example, uh, when you are to ask for a certain value of what, from 1 to 10, and then your program will will display the, the same value but in words. So, switch statement will do, right? Like, for example, case 1, then colon, print if, one in word case value is two printed two but in words that's switch statement um switch statement is simpler compared to ladderized statement on my end it depends upon the viewers right it depends upon you as program because there are some programmers who are so inclined with ladderized and there are some programmers are so inclined with else if statement right so else if statement now here my next video was all about c programming operators right so i i i, I did discuss the different operators in, in c programming there are actually uh, more than five operator types of operators but on that particular video i was discussing, discussing about four i think four Number one is mathematical operators. Mathematical operators deals with plus, minus, divide, right? Um, uh, multiply. And there is this hierarchy of operations. Meaning, if plus, minus, times, and, and divide is within a particular um, expression, this is the rule. We have this... Uh, hierarchy of operations multiplication and division should be evaluated first prior to plus and minus and then the process will start from left to right that's the, the rules in 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 uh, uh mathematical operators right the second type of operators is the logical operator and there are actually three three classes of logical operators not and and force not no sorry not and or there are three and that logical operators will tend to evaluate and the result is either true or false and that refers to boolean values okay so when you are to use logical operators the result is a boolean value okay? and again we we have this Hierarchy of operations also. If in a particular conditions, the three are there, there is this not, and, and, or. Not should be evaluated first. Then followed by and. The last is or. That's the hierarchy of operations. And the third type of operators was this um, assignment operators. Okay, assignment operators. When you are trying to assign this particular particular value to this variable and assignment operator is represented by an equal sign for example c is equal to 2 you are storing 2 to z and at any part of your program when you are going to use c that refers to 2 as value that's assignment operator and uh, the fourth one is the relational operator similar to logical operators it will evaluate the boolean value Relational operators will also evaluate the Boolean value. It will end up to a true or a false. And there are actually several um, relational operators, right? Uh, we have this greater than, 
we have this uh, less than greater than or less or equal to less than or equal to not equal to equal to and its operator has its own behavior and attitudes i did discuss on this particular video and sometimes in a single mathematical expressions right uh, some expressions are actually using all the four uh, programming operators and if that is the case then uh, it, this particular expression should be or should be sold to a boolean value right because in attendance of a mathematical operators and with the presence of logical operators uh, the result will be a boolean value that's the rule in, in, in C programming okay so uh, that's all about uh, C programming operators video and um, the next video that I was discussing and I posted uh, one month ago was actually C programming a vowel or uh, a consonant actually this is actually a, a, a program a sample program similar to uh, a continuation of this second video C programming to lower to upper statements okay I was uh, I was trying to discuss um, string values for example um, this particular car, uh, va variable receives a string value and if the string value is in lowercase in C programming you can convert that into an uppercase or vice versa if it's an uppercase you can convert that into a lowercase right so actually uh, I seldom use uh, the the functionality of lower and to upper statement even the is lower those are actually functions in C programming language which I, I seldom use right? which I seldom use but I did discuss it with, I did discuss it with, right and the next video that I was discussing and I posted it one month ago is this one C programming solutions to six selected programming problems I, 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 I tend to choose and to select six six programming language uh, six programming problems and I did some programming based on the six programming problems and explain it right and uh, along the way I was able to share my techniques in in solving programming problems right. so that's it okay so um, I have actually so many so many uh, programming videos and uh, the next video was this one C programming value swapping right. uh, this is also very interesting when I when I did discuss this one uh, you know in in, in programming if you are just so analytic you can you can create programs well ah. but then if you're not so analytic you you, you find it hard uh, uh, creating formulas just to come up with ah. just try to imagine uh, your program will accept values from the keyboard while it is running and then from that values from the users your program will then swap Say for example, your program receives two values, and these two values are being stored to two variables also. Like for example, you receive one and two as value, and this one goes to A, and two goes to B, and you are tasked or directed to swap the value such that the value of A, which is one, will be stored to B, in the value of B, which is 2, will be stored to, to A. <laughs> That's the problem there. And there are, there are two, two ways to swap values. The, try to imagine. If you are going to swap 10 values, 20 values, huh? that's the problem. You have to create formulas out from the scratch. Okay? So, there are two ways I can remember. Uh... You can either use dummy variable, right? For example, you have this A, you have this B, and you have X. Okay. Uh, 
from this dummy variable, you are going to, to, to place the value of A here in X. And then you can store the value of B to A. And for to restore the value of A and goes to B, you can use the dummy variable. Because the content of dummy variable is actually the value of A. That's dummy. Then what if you're not allowed to use dummy variables? What if the, pro the, pro the programming problems demands for you to use two val variables only? And you are to swap. How is then? All right? So, you have to think, you have to be very analytic in, in, in solving programming problems. So, we have this algorithm to swap values without using dummy variables. What is this? I was discussing that. Add the 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. Right? And store it to A. Then on the next line, subtract the value of A by B. Now take note that the content of B is 2. And the content of A now is 3 because of A plus B. So your A has 3 and your B has 2. Subtract it. The result is actually the value of A. Right? So that's it. Then you can swap. Then you can swap. That's swapping. So this is actually very technical when I was discussing this uh, video. And uh, the next video was this one, C programming techniques in analyzing. Actually, I, I did use the same the same problems in swapping, but uh, I was, you know, I, I the, the, the examples that I gave was, I think I tend to swap five values, right? Using dummy variables. And the other one is without using dummy variables. And along the way, I tried to discuss some techniques right, on this particular uh, video. Actually, there are... As of now, there are actually 460 views. It's good. And uh, the next video that I posted one month ago is uh, C programming for loop state. You know, in, 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 in C programming language, there are actually um, four types of loop statement. Yes, four types. The first one is for loop. That's what I, uh, that's I did discuss on this particular video. The second one is um, the second uh, type is uh, uh, while while loop. The third one is uh, um, what is that? No while loop. And the fourth one is nested for loop. There are actually four. And again, if you are good in this, then programming flexibility comes in, right? Like in my case, uh, when I am going to create programs and if I will be dealing with loop statement, my inclination is in for loop, but I know how to create programs using while, do while, and instead for loop. Okay. So that's it. Now, uh, I, I did discuss the, the technicalities of for loop statement. <coughs> now, actually in any loop statement in C programming language, uh, it must have three processes. Number one, initialization. Number two, conditions. Number three, addition or updates, in either to increase or decrease. Initialization, initialize the, the, the loop first, then check the condition. If the condition is true, perform the loop body. If the condition is false, do not perform the loop body. So it's somewhat similar to if statements, technically. And then, if the condition is true, perform the loop body, loop back. When it loops back, increase or decrease the value. That's addition. Those are actually the, the three major processes in, in any loop state. And I did discuss this in this particular, um, in this particular uh, video. The next video was actually all about for loop still, but in a deeper sense, right? Because when, when I created that video, I, I find it, you know, uh, when I was discussing for loop statement, I find it hard. I was thinking about the viewers on my YouTube channel. Uh, how is it? How is the for loop statement retention on the part of the viewers, right? So, I, give, I did give several examples on that particular video. I give three examples. And from the three programming problems, I tried to do some programming. And along the way, I give, you know, discussions line, line by line, by line right? So, uh, that's it. I'm so tired of summarizing my my video oh. <laughs> okay and uh, here um, the next video that I did post 
three weeks ago, take note. I started creating my YouTube channel and posting my, my C programming language one month ago. Okay. September. Today is October 26. Okay. So one month ago. Here. I have this video, uh, Problems and Solutions Series 1. Then another video, Problems and Solutions Series number 2. Actually, these two videos, I have, I think, three. Uh, another video in here. Programming Problems and Solution 3. I did give a lot of examples starting from, from programming problems that caters taking values from the keyboard that discusses the inputs and outputs, right? I did discuss this on these three videos, uh, programming problems that, that, that caters on loop statements, for loop, while loop, do loop, and nested for loop. And I did give examples, programming examples on conditional statements, right? Like, for example, um, simple if statement, else if statement, right? Nested if statements, switch statement, and so on and so forth. Ladderized if statement. I give all those examples. And I did discuss line by line. And along the way, I shared my own way of analyzing the problems. Yeah. That's how... Um, uh, how I work and how I studied C programming language, right? So um, you know, when if you want to to learn a lot of things, then be willing to get tired of yourself just to learn new things, right? That's it. And the next one is dry run, dry run for online coaching. Actually, I I I did I I I I, I, I sit. Uh, time and date for my online coaching because I felt that, that that my viewers needs an online coaching and I can still remember when, when, when I have I had this uh, online coaching uh, there are so many there are so many questions there are so many demands out from the subscribers hey sir please uh, give an example of this and this and that and I, I even encountered um, problems actually simple at first but when I did programming there was this challenge on my part and uh, the end of the day, it was, it was being solved then. There are so many suggestions out from the viewers. So thank you so much, viewers, for your um, idea and actively participating on the, the, the online coaching. Yeah. So the next video, uh, say programming problems and um, solutions. Uh, same with the first three videos. I was discussing about the problems. And on that particular video, I can still remember that. I was discussing on loop statements, loop statements, right? because um, the way I look at it, um, the, 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 the most complicated thing, starting from basics in C up to loop statement is loop. Right? It takes a lot of analysis and you have to understand the, 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 stru the structure of loop statements, knowing that there are four, so you have to, to understand it line by line by line right so i i give several examples on this uh video and uh, uh i think i was able to deliver good in my discussion right and uh in here um i did post the video on trump versus biden <laughs> personally i i would like to i would like to say that um Trump is winning, I think. Comes November election in the USA. Right? So that's it. And here I, I posted videos video on I tried to celebrate my one key subscribers. Yeah. Three week, week three uh, one week ago. Yeah. I, I have this one, one key subscribers. So thank you so much. Um the require the requirement of YouTube channel is at least you'll end up one key subscribers, right? So I, I, I was able to hit that one again. I, 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 I did uh, post a video on that, right? And uh, hmm, I'm almost done doing my summary of uh, discussion in my video. The next video that I was, I posted six days ago, six days ago, right? C programming while loop statement. In here, I was discussing about the technicalities, the syntax, right? 
the things that you have to look into when you're going to use while statement while loops it. Right? You know, I personally I am I am so inclined with for loop, but then I have to learn while. Same with you guys. Um, I don't know uh, where's your inclination. If you're so inclined with while, then go ahead and make your own day. But uh, in my case, I am so inclined with for loop. I am so comfortable using for loop statement. But then as programmer, you have to be very flexible in, you know, you have you have to have um, choices, right? In, in, in choosing what particular statement you're going into, right? So um, while loops, it, I, I did give examples on that. And uh, along the way, I, I tried to convert program using while loop to for loop so as for the viewers to understand it well and somehow do some uh, paraly uh, paralyzation right and um, my next video that was four days ago C programming do while loop statement now take note there are four types of loop for loop while loop and the third one is do while loop the last one is nested for loop okay so do while loop technically is actually similar to while but then under while loop uh, technically this is uh, the, the sequence of event under while loop you have to check the condition first and if the condition is true perform the loop body if the condition is false do not perform the loop body so in any way if you tend to run your program and if the condition is false there is this big tendency that your program will exit without without executing the loop body but under do while loop statement uh, it is i think opposite to while under do while you have to execute first the loop body then check the condition do while Execute the loop body first and then check the condition whether the condition is true or false. If the condition is false, exit. If the condition is true, perform the loop body again. So it's an opposite to while loop. And uh, the way I look at it, do while loop statement is so much applicable if you're handling minus. For example, you are to create um, ETE machine uh, functionality. You have to use do while because when you tend to run your program, right, and if and if the user wanted to exit, then at least it goes to the menu first. Execute the menu first, then check the condition. Ah, okay. that's that's the good thing with with um do while loop um statement. Okay, and uh, three days ago, I posted C programming nested for loop statement. Three days ago. You know the good thing with nested for loop is this if you want to create a digital clock you can do it by using nested for loop uh, nested for loop technically is similar to nested if statement okay it is actually a loop statement within another loop statement and nested for loop statement uh, is very nice when you are to create patterns in C. If, for example, you wanted to have these squares of asterisk or a semi-pyramid asterisk or a pyramid asterisk or an inverted pyramid or a rectangle, you can do that by using nested for loop. And, uh, you know, I can still remember when I, when I did discuss this video, I gave, I think, three examples. I, I did create program to display squares of asterisk and I did use one nested for loop state and then I give examples also of, of a one semi semi pyramid half pyramid and a single for loop also and then I did give uh, inverted semi pyramid right and it's nice to um, it's so technical you have to you have to learn um, the behavior, you have to understand the behavior of nested for loop. And it takes a lot of, you know, challenges, right? 
Yes, I, I am almost done with my with my summarization. And two hours ago, okay, two hours ago, as of today, um, October 26, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, two hours ago, I posted this video. This is my latest video. There are only 12 views as of now, but I'm sure to this ladies from now it will increase. Because uh, I know um, I have serious subscribers that are willing to learn C programming language okay? and they're following my, my YouTube channel. And uh, this video is all about uh, uh, three loop statements in one video. Right? So three loop statements in one video. This video is uh, good for 25 minutes. Actually, I was discussing about a single problem. And then I, 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 I did programming using for loop. And then I did programming using while loop. And then do while loop. So that's why I, 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 I have the title. C programming does three loop statements in one video. Right? So there is this programming problem. Okay. Um, design a program to ask for an in value in as an, as an integer variable and whatever is that in value that is actually the limit of the loop right and then somewhat similar to a Fibonacci series you have to add it up all so if the loop starts at 1 and end at, ended at 5 then you have to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 that's 15 so you are up to using loop statement Okay, so I did create programs on that using for loop and then translate it the same program actually but using while loop and then programming again using do while loop. It's, it's a very nice video and um, I know my subscribers will like the video. Uh, for my subscribers now that you're that are not uh, you know uh, that are not able to, to see this video my latest video please watch this video that's a very nice um, video okay and uh, you know I have these two common denominators in all the videos that I have okay I, I would like to share this to you guys the first one is I used to have my discussions on my um, uh, online notepad yeah so thanks to the developer of this notepad okay I, I love the design I can discuss all, I can do no manual simulation, for example, in this particular one. I I tried to, you know, to 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 um, execute the programs line by line by way of simulating it, right? And ended up with this particular screen output. So I love this uh, notepad as able to, you know, to share my ideas and discuss it and share it to my um YouTube um, subscribers, right? And then um, to prove that this program is correct, that I did I did use um, online compiler. Okay, so what I did is I I tried to copy this one, right? Highlight all this, and then click copy, and I did use this one. Uh, um, online online uh, compiler. Okay, online compiler. And what I did is I, 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 I tried to copy and paste in here. So for example, if I wanted to, to, for example, if I wanted to create a program, right, uh, I, can, I can do it here. Using for loop statement, for example, right? So int i, um, ah, I'm sorry, I need to, of my right um, sorry okay and I for example I want to display one two three four five or um, I tend to to I tend I, I, I want the user to enter a, a value for n right and then scan f um, uh, present the ampersand um, n for example 
by the way um, I need to to declare NL also here okay and in here um, I need to create a loop I, I is less than or equal to whatever is the value of my n right and then increase the value of i every time it loops um, the next one is um, I am going to display whatever is the value of i okay we're following <laughs> I'm good as I try to I am going to use box last n so as to, to move my cursor to the next to the next line oh I'm so tired of uh, <laughs> I'm so tired of summarizing my video um, uh, I need to return anything because I, I did use uh, uh, an integer main function so I think I can run this program so when I click on that's how I use uh, online compiler right so for my subscribers uh, I'm sorry I need to select okay I need to select a language in here so for my subscribers I I, I, I would like to suggest you you have to, to choose you know um, an online compiler just to 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 run your program execute your program so for example when I'm going to type 7 so that 7 will be stored to n right here and this 7 will serve as my limits on the loop state so when I'm going to press enter K, uh, my program will display 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Why I ended up at 7? Because that's the value of my n. Alright. So that's it. And, uh, you know, programming flexibility. The same screen output, the same problem, but different statements. So that's programming flexibility. So look at this. Um, if I'm going to run this again, okay, and... Um, if I am going to input 10, then that will also be the limit of my loop 10, right? So if I'm going to use while, right, that's programming flexibility. So when I'm going to use while, I can use while, no problem, right? Check the condition, whether the condition is true or false, right? And then uh, initialize here, i is equal to 1, and then in here you have to increase that's updation okay and since there are um, more than one statement in the loop body i need to put a curly bracket right to 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 instruct the compiler that these two lines are actually part of the loop and when i'm going to run this program the same screen output the, but different loop statement that i did use when I'm going to type 7, when I press enter key, it will display the value of mine, right? So, programming flexibility. So, uh, you know, when, when, when I was trying to review my video a while ago, I, I decided to have the summary of all my videos. <laughs> That's how good I am to you guys, subscribers, right? So, now, how about if we are going to translate this into do while so we can still use the do then in here while um, i is less than or equal to n so the same the same result but um, different uh, programs right so when i put 10 then it will display 10 in programming uh, being flexible is so vital yeah you have to learn uh flexibilities you have to learn a lot of statements with the same functions but when you're handling long programs or short programs you're so flexible enough in my case again and again i am so much flex in full loop but i can do programming using while loop do while loop I am so much flex in switch statement, but I know where I can create programs using simple if, if else, nested if, and so on and so forth. Right? So that's the, 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 the good thing in programming. Right? So 
I did use Notepad to share my you know programs and discuss it to the subscribers, and I did use um, online compiler to to run my program and eventually show it to to the subscribers that hey this is the, the output of our program. You can do the same for as long as you have your online compiler. Encode your program. You can encode the same program and be a scientist. Explore. Delete something and run. What's the difference, right? So that's it. That's that's how how programming works. Okay. So I I I hope I was able to summarize all the videos, right? And um, next time I will be you know hosting again several videos and eventually I'll be summarizing it in one video also. Okay. So. Thank you so much for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you learned something today. God bless you. Um, I am so excited with your programming journey. I know two years from now, you'll be good in programming. God bless you. God is good all the time. Stay safe. Goodbye for now.